Alrighty guys, I think it's time now to talk about the new balance patch and give you guys a tier list for the updated changes to the characters. So, starting off, we're going to go with Metis. Metis got a slight buff with some adjustments to ammo capacity. Didn't really change anything too, too much. Metis is a good character. Metis is very valuable to have on your team. So, um, we're going to put Metis at like... Take low, low taking off your socks after you get comfy in bed, is what I would say. So, um... Like I said, powerful for supporting teammates, has a good res capability with the ability to res while continuing to attack, does solid damage, just more damage than, more than before, like consistently more damage with higher amount of ammo. Like this is one of the characters that actually does like make good usage of having more ammo in its capacity. So, yep, Metis is going to be like low taking off your socks after you get comfy in bed. Jim, I think people think Jim's really bad. Um, I don't think Jim's bad. I think people just don't quite know how to use the character and they are used to getting slapped around by Exia and Jim. Like to be fair, playing against like a Melee Zaku or like an Exia and letting them push into you is very difficult with Jim and if you're playing on a map that you don't have a good situation to deal with that, then yeah, it's rough, right? Like if you're playing Jim on like um, one of the domination maps and you're just getting like flanked all the time, then yeah, it's gonna be kind of difficult. But on some of these other maps where you could set up, set up good dynamites or good, you know, fire bombs and get them going consistently, it's solid. And since Jim only got buffs with a distance to increase range and increase throwing distance, Jim's still good. Um, not like super, super amazing or anything, but I do think healers are severely underrated in this game. So we're going to put Jim in a high waking up hungover, but at least you're not dead. Yeah. yeah. All right. Unicorn Gundam. Unicorn Gundam strong. Unicorn Gundam also got some buffs to ammo capacity. I think Unicorn Gundam is good. Like the high, mid, taking off your sock. Maybe, maybe a little bit lower just because. Oh yeah, like about, generally about the same area as Metis is. Like I said, Unicorn also did get a buff to ammo capacity a little bit, but has always been solid with the amount of armor that is giving team teammates. The ultimate's powerful. The little funnel ability is quite strong actually and it pushes enemies around and it bursts through shields which is powerful so i think unicorn's good too you just also have to have to be careful with unicorn playing it in the same sort of circumstance that you have with metis like well both metis and unicorn and actually jim does the best but metis and unicorn play badly on domination maps and these sort of places where they're easily can get flanked just because there is so much movement in the game so like a zaku are they just flank around really quickly and like do a full rotation which is three dashes into the back line to get on top of a metis or like a unicorn so yeah but i do think they're still powerful in a lot of the circumstances and if you're playing together like you have a gym and a metis playing together or like you're playing with a group of people at all or you're just coordinating in any slight of way or really you're just not playing on one of these these king of the hill maps i think they're quite powerful and they can sustain your team through pushes very 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 well all right, so with those covered, we're gonna jump over to some of the damage characters. Vibratos, I think, is powerful in the right hands. In other ones, it's not. It's very hit or miss. That's what they tend to do with these kind of characters. The one-shot characters, they become very hit or miss. So at lower ranks, in the hands of like people who aren't good at the character, or really the higher you go in the ranks, actually, the worse it's gonna be. But at lower ranks, if you have any decent ability to aim at all, you can just kind of roll with this character. Um, that's how I'm going to put it lower, like low, low waking up hungover, but at least you're not dead kind of thing. Barbatos is powerful in a lot of ways, just because of the fact that you can always trade a kill with it. Any sort of target that's chilling, doing its thing, you can jump on, slam, and then use your longsword combo to finish and completely delete. So even if you die in the process, you get a full kill. So on any of these maps, like... Black Fort, um, Missile Base, any of these two CB maps, you can basically just go into your brains out and go trade a kill. And then you're always going to have this respawn advantage, right? Even if you die in the process, you get to trade it. So really powerful if you're using it decently at all. Exia is the best character in the game. <laughs> Exia is always vibing out on a warm summer night, playing the game, dashing into you, hard stunning you, CCing you with, with movement, pushing you around with the best movement in the game, with a range poke that's better than like everything in the game except for Sniper and an ultimate that's just obscene and 
makes it even harder to actually see it just because of the fact that it puts a little like red afterglows around it. And so when you're playing on like 40 frames as the game's dropping down in the middle of a fight, you have like Exia is just impossible to hit, but Exia is still extremely powerful. They reduced his or they reduced the the damage from 350 to 300 for its charged punch ability and they changed the cooldown from 8 seconds to 10 seconds, but it's still insane. It didn't really change it. It's still the best character in the game for sure. Jim Sniper is still very powerful. Um, but honestly, like I'm going to put a higher up like I'm going to assume people are generally using some of these characters where you should. And that's where we're going to talk about it from Jim's going to be like a low, like a mid no worries kind of thing. Just because it's so oppressive on certain maps, like playing it on defensive harbor is incredibly powerful. You just mark these sight lines and you just completely roll. And the hitboxes are massive in this game. It's easy to hit headshots. There's a lot you can do with this character. Now, yeah, if you're playing this character on like a King of the Hill map, you're going to struggle, right? As like you have an Exia slapping you in the face and you have like things dashing all around you and all that sort of nonsense for its sight lines. But on any of these long maps, like particularly harbor, um, you will just, just win the whole game for you. So yeah, probably close to Axia to be honest, but it's not nearly as powerful because Axia is way more generalist and good in like all situations. All right, all right, 78 Gundam. All right, 78 Gundam's still really good too. It's game breaking in a lot of ways with its ability to just burn through shields. It has one of the highest, most consistent damages in the game next to Pale Rider, two shotting, any squishy, any 800 hero, any 800 HP character, and then getting close to two shotting um, thousand hit point characters because it does 200 or 480 per shot. So if something's taking any damage, you can two shot them, right? That's really powerful. Its ultimate is a lot stronger than people think if you use it properly, like toss mine a corner or something like that. It's really oppressive, like throw it in the middle of the fight. The shield is just just like an extra little boon that it has that it even doesn't have an explanation for why it should even have that character or have that ability. That part's insane, but this character is really, really, really good. So I bet I mean, but I'll put it higher than Jim Sniper just because Jim Sniper is not good in all situations. All right, so moving on to Ashimar. Ashimar is very powerful. We're going to put it in high, taking off your socks, getting a buff to its ammo is pretty powerful. Its napalm is still super strong and oppressive. Its flight's excellent. It its ultimate gives you a free kill on whatever you punch into and it has a massive radius so you can get a hit on multiple enemies free reload when you do that and that's like oppressively powerful so honestly flash is really strong like these guys are like low taking off socks kind of thing well flash is still very high very powerful it's good in a lot of circumstances too so pretty impressive my hero's trash um, it has it has a limited circumstance that it's good to use it in which is like only on harbor defense and basically like only second point of harbor defense and even before that I would argue definitely not wanting, wanting to be using it on the first section of harbor and even using it on even using it like it still doesn't even have as much competitive viability as some other characters just because this character is not going to do too hot in like the second portion of the second defense point on harbor because then the sight lines get a lot wider and there's a lot more open space where people can walk through but yeah like obviously chunking just just chunking these shots off cooldown and then using the animation cancel for the um like its other ability using that to animation cancel reload faster lets you do a lot of a lot of damage when all enemies are just grouped up walking into one single choke point but it's still just trash overall really bad really really bad like i said it did get some slight adjustments but its adjustments were like reduce cooldown on the the ability that you shouldn't even be using because it's so bad you should just be using it to reload like animation cancel your reload so just really not the best strategy all around all right moving on to zaku range so zaku range actually did not get a change which was kind of kind of interesting because people were like Disappointed to see that like all the hit scan range characters got buffs, but Zaku range didn't. So yeah. However, it's still very strong. Somewhere around the level of Ashimar. Very, very, very effective on maps that allow you to flank decently. Like yeah, maybe maybe not the best on something like Ori first. Because it'll be hard to get through the choke points. But playing it on some of the two C or some of the King of the Hill maps is super, super strong. Just the fact of 
having really high mobility, having a get out of jail free card with your, your smoke, consistent damage. That's actually a lot better than people think it is. If you just kind of get up close on the enemy and just spam them with it. And then the ability to cancel that with a grenade that is very annoying and pushes you around. You can animation cancel with a grenade. And so you basically can like spam fire your shots, animation cancel with the reload with the grenade. If you wait like two seconds in between this time period, then you can go back in with your primary fire again and then reload and use the animation cancel and grenade again because it's cooldown. It's pretty short, but it's ultimate is an is a one shot kill and anything that you hit with it. If you just turn around and finish the shots. So one v one against anything, you get a free kill. So just running around the map like you should be able to 1v1 most things in the game. So playing against it, you should be able to 1v1 like, you know, Jim Sniper, Exia, really, Ashimar, Metis, Unicorn, not Jim Sniper, um, Barbatos, Mahiro, Gun Tank. Gun Tank can be a little bit tricky. It's actually like the one thing Gun Tank's decent at, but you just have to keep your distance and make sure you don't get hit by the, the rockets and you're fine. But um, kind of Pale Rider. Pale Rider is hard because of the healing. Pretty Gundam, um, Zaku Melee. Marasai, Stormtrooper, right? That's where you like, you should have a solid or good matchup against all those characters. But then when something like a Sazubi shows up or a couple enemies show up, you just press your ultimate and you slash them and kill them. You know, it's oppressive. It's super easy to hit. It's a free solid stun that just goes forever. And the character is very strong, very strong in general. Pale Rider is, although I would say like, if you're really good at this sort of character, it goes even higher and it's like here. But it for general purposes is still very excellent. All right, Pale Rider. Pale Rider is really good. Pale Rider is like RX 78 level, roughly equivalent. Just has the highest damage output in the game, highest consistent damage output in the game. Its ultimate is extremely powerful. They did nerf it, so it takes more time to get it, but it's not that big of a deal if you're just using your ultimate when you need it. The change to the grenade is good. It has like a longer time of of activity but it has a reduced effect which is good like for the character in general to be honest because it makes it so it's more consistent right so you can use it to like pop it on a corner when you know that an enemy is chasing you so it'll just like have a more guaranteed effect of catching them up and giving you that extra tiny bit of time to escape because what will happen a lot of times is like you need just like you need just like that much more to like escape but because you don't have the uh, you only have like a one second time period in your grenade you toss it and then like they might completely miss the time period for it. But with two seconds, you just slow them down like a tiny little bit that you need to escape, right? But using this as effective, like the grenade is actually pretty, pretty good now, I would say. Um, in, in decent since they buffed it from like the network test. But Pale Rider is really powerful and it has one of the higher healing abilities in the game, which is weird to me, but it's just excellent. Really, really super strong. Going on flanks, just pumping damage into things, like even pumping damage into like your counter, like a Sazabi, and the Sazabi will be running out of HP pretty soon and will die. So, very strong. All right, um, gun tank. Gun tank is horrible. <laughs> they didn't change it at all. They said, all right, boys, it has a 50% win rate because so many people play it. More or less 50% or whatever. It has a lower percentage of win rate at a higher rank and in higher at a lower rank. So, you know, yeah, we'll just keep it out as it is. The character's horrible. The only thing it's okay at is like dueling bad flanker players. So bad Exia's, bad Zaku ranged, bad Barbatos players, because you can use your dash to like hit them with it and then turn around and hit them again and then punch them and it does like a solid chunk of damage. I think I think it's 100 per like run through and then 300 for the slash. So it's like 500 damage, right? And then if you hit that with like your with your missile, you can kill them, right? And so that's that's really decent. But if they're a good flanker player, like if they're a good Barbatos player, they just won't fight you if they're and like this is only in like a one-on-one -on -one circumstance like this is them trying to kill you right if they're good zaku range they'll just dodge the missile and then hit you if they're good xia yeah, they'll just roll you for sure but character's terrible and that's why it's going down into projectile firing device metal covered war car which by the way I, that means gun tank i try, try to be sneaky with it but yeah anyway moving on turning gundam so i used to kind of think turning gundam was garbage and it's not that good in general but it has the best ultimate in the game so playing turning gundam on something like king of the hill is okay like if you're playing against like a zaku melee or playing against like a barbatos exia that you can get consistent grabs onto then yeah it's gonna be pretty good it's gonna be like you know ashimar level kind of with its normal base gameplay 
but if you're just like having like a range spam battle if you're competing in other methods and just like normally using your character it's a little it's like a chunk above my hero right so it's like when you have to be on a flight but you're in the window seat like this kind of level um but it's ultimate just bumps it all the way up only on the maps that are good for it so if you're playing like if you're playing on to one of the two CP maps or a bomb planting mode, it's just obscene. Like, especially on the two CP maps, I honestly want to turn a Gundam on my team every single time I'm fighting on a one of the two CP maps, just because of the fact of like, this ultimate is so oppressive, so powerful. The enemy like fights their way and they push through the first section of like missile base, right? And they're pushing into second, they're trying to capture second. And they get past that first like choke point, right? And they don't lose anybody. And then they start getting on the point and they start contesting, right? And then you like kill two, like, you know, you're fighting, right? You kill like two or three of the enemy team and you're like, oh, we're going to win this. We're going to be able to do it. And then Tornado Gundam just flies above, instantly kills somebody. Everyone else starts dashing away, right? It chases down two of the people that flew away. Now they're dead. But your other team, the other two people on your team took like half damage escaping. And so he just kills everyone, right? And then if they're smart, they just keep farming the ult as much as possible. It's obscene. It's ridiculous. Like it's so frustrating how many of these of these two CP matches turn straight into like who has the better turn a Gundam, you know, like your turn a Gundams out there like ulting 1v6 with half health, obviously dying. And then there's just holding their cool their ultimate for every time that your team starts getting an advantage. It's uh, it's so powerful. But yeah, like I said, pretty low in like standard gameplay. But when it gets this old, it's insane. When it gets this old, it's like high up to like here, right? Maybe low, around like a Metis level kind of thing. But with playing on something like one of these two CP maps, it's just just ridiculous. Like, I don't even tell you guys it's obscene. All right, Sazabi. I used to think Sazabi was necessary for every team. I did as a Sazabi player, someone who's put a lot of time in the character. And the more I realized that you just get hard countered by like everything. <laughs> right? You get hard countered by Exia, RX-78, Barbatos, where's Barbatos? Barbatos, you get really hard countered by Barbatos. You get bullied by Trinity Gundam's ult, Exia's ult, Hell Rider's ult can burst through your shield super fast. You really, really get bullied by Ashimar punching you in the face, Saku range punching you in the face. Um, Dom Trooper slapping into you. Really bullied by Zaku melee. Right, and there's just so many things that counter you. But even if they don't have the things that are countering you, your character has such a limited shield that you can't go properly control spaces on the map and do things that you should be able to as a main tank character. Um, so Sazabi's garbage, to be completely honest. It's not as bad as like a Mahiro or Gun Tank by any means, but it's still like pretty mid-tier on when you have to pee on a flight, but you're in the window seat. Like it's pretty trash. I, I basically don't play Sazabi anymore. And that's coming from like, you know, a 4500 Winston player. I should be able to make this character just absolutely frag out. And I can, I just get tired of it basically. So I stopped playing the character. All right, um, Melee Zaku. So Melee Zaku, oh, and I guess I should also mention that Sazabi to get nerfed. It, it, it was like a weird adjustment to the way that it did, like they reduced the damage a bit by about, I think it's an 80, 80 max damage they reduced it. From like 596 to like 510 something like that with a like full damage headshot from close range and then they made the range have a little bit more of an increase but the range is like like i checked it out the range has like an an immediate drop off like you go like what it looks like you know five feet if you're looking at them from like the size of like a human right like five feet away from the thing and then the fallout maybe like you know seven feet seven feet from the enemy and then the fall off like immediately starts and then like another two feet and it's completely dropped off. So this change is completely weird. And all I think this is going to do is just make it so like the two shots you could get from closer range are going to turn into three shots. Oh, yeah. Blech. All right. And this is pretty low tier. Wish I could just put it in the middle, but anyway, Melee Zaku. So Mr. Zaku Melee here got some hefty. Well, I got some nerfs, right? So they made it so he has a range reduction on his primary fire. Went from like 1100 range to like 960. I believe the exact changes were. It's not too much of a change, but it is a change. They also made it so his they made it so it's um, it's rage doesn't do as much. 
it deals less damage when it is using its ultimate with rage so instead of dealing 375 per hit now it's dealing um uncle less i think it's doing 250 where it deals 200 standard now so it did get some hefty nerfs to its ultimate to make it less annoying but the character is still really powerful to be completely honest the fact that it can just run down things charge up its rage none of that got changed at all so it hard counters sazabi it bullies the crud out of gym sniper or gym it bullies anything on any hard choke points and there's a lot of hard choke points in the game like you just throw your you just throw your little little fire strike ability into a choke hit three people get half charge walk up use your your little steadfast ability to charge up the rest and then you just hit that rage with full hp and you just walk in the enemy and you're just chunking them all just dealing full groups of damage and any enemy that gets down you're cleaving through them so you're killing them in two hits with that you get your ultimate up the ultimate like i said it's not nearly as strong as it was but it's still insane because the damage wasn't really what was so crazy about it like whereas before you would three shot a 1000 hit point character <clears throat> assuming they have full hp now you're doing it with four shots right but you're still pushing them around a lot and you're still like because you, you hit when every time you hit them you move them right and so moving them around is insane and that's the part that's broken because it makes it so hard for enemies to actually like hit you but that's still super powerful you still have all the extra armor from rage you're still able to like consistently get like two or three kills anytime you want to with this ultimate it's not as good as turning gundams but it's still super powerful but this character is better in standard play especially if anything's frontlining like if a sawsby's in the game just run up into them slam them in the face knock their shield out of their hands <laughs> you know it's just ridiculous but anyway this character is still really strong too it's not as good as it used to be though maybe it was like up here next to exia and i think this character is this character is exploitable if you're playing like 6v6 with a good team you can just shoot it in the face and focus it down before it can do what it needs to do but in standard play it's still very powerful to be honest just with the way that the maps are like if you're if you pop this character into overwatch for example with the way the maps are designed it wouldn't be good it would be good on some situations but in other ones it wouldn't just with feel like we're to give it the relative same amount of hp and stuff like that it would be hard to charge it up you get focused down um i guess you'd also have latent healing to sustain you so maybe it's not the best example but the point is it is exploitable but the fact that the maps in this game are so designed with these really tight corridors with very close spaces where you can just walk up onto things and you can go on some little flank and then show up right next to a bunch of enemies so powerful marasai marasai got a nerf to its hook its hook got reduced in speed by um 33% or yeah technically yeah 33% it went down from 7500 to 5000 so that actually doesn't matter to be completely honest like it was really difficult to hit range hooks anyway on things that were moving because they have dashes and so basically like you would kind of have to just guess and predict where they were going anyway a lot of the time um and so like whereas then if you pulled upon something and they were looking at you you hooked them killed them that was that right but this game isn't like you're not Roadhog and Overwatch where things have a generally predictable movement. And so you go to hook anything that is predictable. You don't you're not going to try as often to go on something like a Tracer or Genji, right? But everything in this game is more or less kind of like Tracer and Genji, so they're harder to hit. But what you do with this character is you throw its hook into areas where you know enemies are going to be standing. And you predictably will get a lot of kills with it. So it's still very powerful. And yeah, there's times where it's harder to hit a hook on something. But it's really just about, like I said, guessing kind of because you were guessing anyway. You just had the ability to guess with more certainty, I guess, because of the fact that the hook was faster. But now that it takes longer, it's it's not as consistent with that. But I haven't felt any difference. I've not felt anything worse about this character. So this character is still excellent, to be honest. And the reason it's the reason I'd say it's good. It's not as good as RX-78 Gundam. It's not as good as Pale Rider. Its ultimate still very strong. It doesn't have it doesn't compete against like a gym sniper in the map like on a gym sniper's good map so it's not nearly as good as turning gundams but it's still extremely powerful so we're gonna put it like mm, around in here you know it's it's better it's it's good
still very good for sure. If you can hit your shots. If you can hit your shots decently and you can hit your hooks decently. So, like I said, not as good as some of these other characters. So if you're like deciding to play like RX-70 Gundam or Marasai, you should play RX-70 Gundam. All right, Dom Trooper. Dom Trooper is pretty good. Not insane, to be honest. It's good, I would say. I put it about a gym. In the beta, in the network test, it was really good because it had a 500 armor pack. But it's really only good now since I got nerfed in, and its damage got nerfed a bit. It's only good in circumstances in which it is able to force enemies into like a room or something like that. Using its ultimate in a room is very powerful. You can't avoid it. It just runs around slapping into things. Can't be damaged, just bullies enemies. But there's an exploit that you can use. I don't really know how many people know about this quite yet, but basically when the when the Dom Trooper is like pushing into you, right as it's about to hit you, you jump up and then it'll hit the bottom of you. Oh, it's getting weird. It'll hit the bottom of you basically and it'll knock you up in there and then you just hover and then it'll fly around like, oh no, I can't get to that guy again. So it's not the same sort of oppressive just like slap into you and push into you and push into you. It had a huge advantage playing against things like Dom Trooper and Jim just because of the fact that whenever it hit them one time, they dropped their shield entirely. But now the people aren't playing that quite as much. They realize they suck. Um, It's gotten a bit like nerfed in value, right? Like if you're playing against a Dom Trooper and Sazabi, you're playing against Sazabi and Jim like in every single game, then it'd probably be up towards like where Marisai is. But it's gotten buffs not having to, or like it's gotten nerfed retro, like nerfed comparatively not having to play against them. Similarly to how Mars Eye has gotten buffed, not having to play against these shield characters that it suffers into. So, yeah guys, there you go. If you're looking for some more Gundam Evolution videos, then make sure to check out my mobile suit guides. I made one for all original The 14 mobile suits, and I did a Should You Main Guide series also, covering the same mobile suits and talking about whether you should actually main them in Gundam Evolution or not.